The real reason you're not getting promoted is probably not what you think. It's not that your boss is blocking your way because he doesn't like you, or the senior vice president is making sure you don't advance. It's not because the position was given to the CFO of the nephew. The real obstacle may be something you have never considered. We've got five such reasons why professionals don't get promoted, and they're not the issues that most people talk about, although they probably should. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss the one issue that will absolutely blow your mind. Of course, with each of these reasons, we'll share some tips on how you can overcome the obstacle in question. Reason number one, there are no opportunities. Maybe your organization, your accounts payable, your accounting, your financial organization is kind of static. Everybody's in their job, nobody seems to be leaving, nobody's getting promoted, and therefore there are no opportunities for you to move up. Now, if you're happy with this situation, that's fine. If you know everybody's getting along and you're, you're happy, that's fine, there's no reason to fix it. But if you're not satisfied with this situation, here are some things, here's your fix. So first of all, you're gonna address, can you live with the situation? Yeah, and if you're okay with it, then that's fine, as we said. But you might also look into seeing whether or not there are other responsibilities that you can take on. While this might not get you promoted, it might get you a larger raise than average, okay? Um, and if, if this is not satisfactory to you, then it may be that you need to start looking at other departments or possibly even other, or other companies. Reason number two, and this is more common than you might think, management doesn't realize that you want to be promoted, okay? Um, now, how do you know? Well, you can ask, and the fix for this is simple. Um, tell them what your goals are and ask what you need to do to get promoted. Now, the ideal time to do this is during your annual review. But if your annual review just passed, and you don't feel like waiting a whole year, then maybe you want to discuss, uh, set up a meeting with your boss to discuss your job prospects and your job opportunities, okay? This is related to reason number three. And this is a little bit more difficult to address, but if it, it it's important that if this is the reason, you know it, and then you can take the necessary steps to um, address it. So reason number three, management doesn't think you're capable or have the necessary skills, even though you know full well and in, in, in whatever that you do. So if this is the situation, what can you do about it? Well, first of all, what you're going to do, the fix, if you will, is ask your boss, okay? You need to find out if this is the perception of you, um, because if you're not getting promoted and you want to, you need to figure out what, why is this happening to me? So ask your boss. now. When you get the response and you tell them, look, I want an honest response. I'm not going to argue with you. I just want to know how people you know, view me. Try not to get insulted and react, but rather when, they, when your boss tells you that um, you know, management doesn't perceive you as being um, promotable or uh, management material, ask them what you can do to change that perception. And then listen to what they say, you know, make some notes and, you know, then make the necessary changes. Now, if you get this answer, and depending upon what the response is, this might be one of those times when you, you have to go back to, as we talked about in situation number one, where there were no opportunities. Um, do you like your job enough to stay in it without having any promotional opportunities? Or um, can you make the changes and will it make a difference? And that's going to take time. Or is it time perhaps for you to start looking around for another opportunity? Uh, reason number four, and reason number four, I'm gonna say that if this is the, the answer, you probably have an inkling that it's the answer. And uh, it's, it's the reason, I'm sorry. And that is you don't play the political game, okay? And many of us uh, fall into that that trap. It's, it's hard to do, or at least it's hard for some people to do. Others, you know, they do it, it comes second nature to them. So what's the fix, okay? Well, if you're not sure that this is the reason, again, you're going to need to ask. Now, this assumes you have a good relationship with your boss and you can ask him, but this is something you could ask one of your colleagues or peers who you trust about. Then, once you've determined that's the reason, then you need to figure out, 
can you fix the problem? Um, sometimes you can, but sometimes there's already been too much damage done or you may not be willing to do what it takes. Um, in either of these situations, then you have to decide, if, okay, do I want to stay? Or, and if you do, that's fine. Or do I need to go and look for an opportunity elsewhere? But how can you fix it? Let me give you a few examples. Sometimes it's simply a matter of keeping your mouth shut which I know is a lot easier said than done. So keep this in mind. Before you speak up to disagree with someone who could have uh, an impact on your career, think for a minute, is it really worth the battle? You've heard that old saying about winning the battle and losing the war. Long term, is disagreeing with that person over this, whatever the particular issue, is it really worth it? I'm going to give you another example, um, and this is a subtle one, but it could have impact on the person's long-term uh, career prospects within the organization. Now, I used to work for a very large uh, insurance company that had a big United Way program, and they were very proud of it, and they were proud of the high percentage of employee participation um, that they, they got. My boss thought it was wrong for them to ask us at work to donate and to get so, if you will, involved in our personal affairs. He thought charitable donations were a private matter. And to be honest, I agreed with him. Okay, but making this matter worse, the organization wanted 100% of its offices to donate. And when I say donate, I mean it was um, deduct payroll deductions, okay? Um, if you were an officer, and thankfully, he was an officer, and but thankfully I wasn't at that particular point in time, and you didn't have the automatic deduction from your paycheck, you weren't name went on a list, and you got a call from the executive vice president asking why you weren't donating and suggesting that maybe you should. Now, if you think that this is wrong and this was not the right way to approach it, I'm going to tell you I agree. But it is what it is, and this is what the situation was there. But at the end of the day, if you're looking to have a career with an organization that values this, who wants to get in, into a dispute with an EVP over an issue like this? Um, I'm a great believer in picking your battles. Sometimes, yes, this is a battle worth fighting, even if you're going to lose, but not this, this one. Now, my boss was pretty astute politically, and so what he did is he donated $1 per pay period so that that his name did not appear on that awful list and he didn't have to have that ugly conversation with somebody who would have some say over his future promotions. I'm willing to bet he wasn't the only officer making the dollar per pay period donation just to keep their name off that list. Now, I am not saying to go along with something that you believe to be ethically immoral. That's not what I'm advocating at all. But if you can find a way to avoid a dispute over minor issues, take it. Because you don't want to be seen as that, you know, person who's always battling with everyone. Now, before we get into the mind-blowing reason you may not be getting promoted, if you're getting value from this talk, please hit the thumbs up or like button. It lets the provider know that this talk has value and should be shown to others like you. And you should be seen more like it. Okay, for the mind-blowing reason, reason number five, you're too good at your job. You're irreplaceable. Or at least that's what management thinks about you in your current position. If you ever hear your boss saying something like, I don't know what we do without Jane or Joe, or we'd be lost without Jack, that may be a clue that this is the reason. Now there's a simple fix for this, and that is train your replacement. Make sure you are replaceable. That way, there's no reason to management to skip over you at promotion time. Now I know this sounds a little scary because it feels like you're giving up your safety net, and to a certain extent you are. But if you want it, if you want to get promoted, it's what you have to do. The thing about promotions is that they generally don't come without an interview. And don't assume those interviews are slam dunks because often there are several people being considered, including some external candidates who might have some pretty impressive experience. That's why it's imperative that you prepare for these interviews just as you would an interview at an external organization. We recently put a short video together, a 15 minute prep routine that you should go through before every job interview, whether it's internal or external. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and it's in the description. Good luck.